So let's now discuss this idea of tensegrity. Tensegrity is one of the most important ideas to understand in the world of fascia, and yet it's one of the most complicated. So let's dig into it. Now, the idea of tensegrity was first popularized by an artist by the name of Kenneth Snelson. Now, Kenneth made these beautiful sculptures and works of art all over the United States where he showed that you can hold and suspend these solid struts or pipes in the air using nothing more than the tension of wires and cables. Now, his artwork is beautiful and interesting, but it's not very applicable. He, however, opened the door into this concept of tension being used instead of compression. There was a man by the name of Buckminster Fuller who came into that door and he decided that this was a beautiful opportunity to start to apply these concepts to the human body. And he came up with this idea called biotensegrity. So biotensegrity is then a structure of which the integrity of the structure west rests on the balance of tensional forces rather than compressive forces. Now that's important because we now understand that if you view the body through the idea of tensegrity, meaning everything's held in place by tension rather than compression, we start to see a much more adaptable understanding of how any living system, and in this case, the human body functions and works. So we need to understand first and foremost this idea of geometry. Now we're not going to be really digging into grade school geometry by any means, but I want to understand that everything is about geometry. Now it's said by this man by the name of Darcy Thomas who quoted Galileo who in turn cited Plato, the book of nature may indeed be written in the characters of geometry. Now this is to say that has long been recognized all of nature is based on geometric shapes. Classic biomechanics doesn't really take this into consideration. Everything else does. When we look at how, say, a spiral arm galaxy works, that's based on geometry. When we look at how a tree grows, we understand that's geometry, but we haven't really applied this concept to the human body. With the idea of tensegrity, we can absolutely do so. Let's first take a look at a classic tensegrity model. So this is done by the artist Snelson, as I mentioned before, and as we can see, it's a beautiful geometric shape. But note how each one of these pipes is essentially just floating in air. Those wires are doing nothing more than applying tension all the way up this big, beautiful work of art. Now, our human body is basically the same thing. Of course, we're made of much more than just wires and struts or wires and pipes, but the ideas hold true. The ideas apply very, very well. So without getting lost in the weeds too terribly much, we need to keep in mind that it's geometry. It's how these shapes interact with each other and distribute force perfectly, beautifully, and evenly. Now, the best way that we can understand this is this idea of these things called plutonic solids. Plutonic solid is basically the building blocks of everything in nature. And within the human body, what we now start to understand is that the body is made up of these plutonic solids that's called an icosahedron. Now, there's other types of plutonic solids that the body's made of, but the icosahedron is the primary one. Now, this starts to get complicated very, very quickly. So if you want to dig much more deeper into how the body is, in fact, a geometric shape, I'd strongly encourage you to take a look at these two books, particularly Yoga, Fascial Anatomy, and Movement, in which Joanne Avison digs really deep into the geometry of the human body. Now, the other book, The Tensional Network of the Human Body, really goes into the basic anatomy, and you can also see how it's all based on geometry. So let's leave it at that for now. Once we start to look more detail at the tensegrity model, this idea is going to make a lot more sense. So there is an organization called the Fascial Research Congress. They're an amazing organization that's dedicated a tremendous amount of time, energy, and money into the research of fascia. And they decided it's about time we redefine fascia. Remember, up until now, fascia was considered not much more than wrapping around muscles. And that is absolutely true, but it's much more than that. So we're going to redefine it. What we'll define fascia as is a collagenous fibrous connective tissue that can be seen as elements of a body-wide tensional force transmission network. So that basically means fascia is more than just a wrapping, is it transmits force and it works on tension. Now these ideas are going to make more and more sense as we start to play around with this idea of tensegrity. So this is an interesting example and it was made by Intention Designs. So we could see that this is roughly a human shape and what's most interesting about it is everything is being suspended and held in place. We could see that other than the foot, which is firmly planted on the ground, all of the other dowels or the sticks in this case are all being suspended and held in place by nothing more than elastic bands. Now you can go to intentionsdesign.com and you can buy and play with this model and it's really fascinating to do so. But I think we should probably make our own. The idea gets lost in the weeds, again, very easily until we start to play with it. So let's do that. Let's look at what a 
tension tensegrity model actually looks like. So this is a very, very tiny ten tensegrity model that I made, and it's made of nothing more than tacks, elastics, and some chopsticks. Now, the reason I chose to make it like this is so you could very easily make one at home without having to go and buy one. So again, just elastics, taps and tacks, and chopsticks. Let's take a look on how to build one of these and play around with it, come back, and we'll learn a little bit more.